This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Uh, this is the second year of the contest. Last year, we wound up picking two winners. They're both incredible. And of our 16 finalists, probably about a dozen of them are um, continuing to develop their game. Well, this year we're coming at things from kind of a, a different perspective. Um, we're putting a lot of placement on uh, the design and art of the game. Last year when we filmed the prologue, it was Trin's first day. Uh, Max basically just called me two days before the prologue filming and said to me, Hey, I need you to come in uh, to your new job a week early, and also you need to be funny on camera. Can you do that? And now I'm watching my deputy, Alex. This is like her second week of work, and she's uh, on camera doing the prologue, so I kind of feel like she's being a little Trin Jr. It's adorable. I can really identify with Alex right now because she's doing such an amazing job, but I'm sure she's so nervous. It's awful. Everything's awful always. I think it's really important for a tabletop deathmatch to exist not only to get independent designers sort of into the mainstream, but also so that other people can see how games are made and they could maybe be inspired to make their own stuff and put it out into the world. We wish we had had more help when we were trying to put our wacky idea and make it into a real game, so everybody wins. It just felt like this thing that was that was waiting to happen and everyone just had this great feeling um, for it. So I think we're going into it this year with a, with a lot more confidence. Uh, this game is called Shut Up and Take My Money and it's a party game about crowdfunding. So it's a game about making games, which is very meta. And what I did like about it was that uh, it says a common theme of the game is to make fun of common tropes in gaming. Oh, wow. that. Yeah, which I like yeah. to do anyway. Yeah. So. My name is Thomas Galassier. I'm a French uh, man living in Kansas, um, and I'm the designer of Shut Up and Take My Money. It's a uh, party game about crowdfunding and making games. I lived in France, and I studied English uh, through middle school, high school, college, and I was an exchange student in Fargo, North Dakota, and that's where I met uh, my wife, Natalie. We got married uh, a few years later, and we decided to move to uh, Kansas together. In Shut Up and Take My Money, players are game designers trying to um, be famous by putting their games on a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding platform. Each turn, you combine cards to come up with these wacky game concepts. You have to pitch your game and then you earn points. It's a very fun game because players have to be creative and react on the spot. And so, Sometimes they come up with crazy ideas or sometimes they don't know what to do until they're asked a question and you know something clicks. They can make re real reference to other games, of course, or to other uh, tropes. My top two games are probably Love Letter and Kemet. They're both very different. Love Letter is a very small, very simple card game and Kemet is a game about war in this mythical Egypt world. It's very cutthroat in both cases, <laughs> so it's very different from the games uh, I design, I guess. I decided to work with Ade and Maki. Ade because he is a graphic designer who knows a lot about typography and like layout and very clean design and that's what I wanted because the game is mostly uh, text. Hi there. Hey! You've seen the uh, 3D like mock-up I try to do or? Yeah, um, I really like the mock-up itself. Um, I think okay. that'll work well as far as working on the box. Like I, I provided two versions um, of the logo. I provided one that was just like the straight, the straight little 3D shadow, uh -huh. uh, I, which is just like we've done for the shut up and the take my money cards. But I also provided that one with the, it's like has a little bit of a halftone shadow too, along with it. I think it blurs the uh, outline a little bit too yeah. much. But if there's, you know, a bubble, a speech bubble around it, maybe that could be, that could have the dropped 
uh, shadow. Okay. Uh, I'm still debating about the uh, little text on the, you know, the title at the bottom of each uh, vote cards. The uh, S T U M T M M. Yeah. Okay, we can remove it. So that's what the actual new logo looks like. Um, we decided to keep the green uh, color, but uh, we went for a different font, something that's more uh, dynamic. So yeah, the first files uh, Mackie sent were a few sketches, you know, for the box. And it was like, oh, I'm just gonna sketch a few things on, on the bus because I'm having a bus trip, I'm taking the bus, blah, blah, blah. And he sent a few sketches and, you know, it was just like a few lines, but it's like, wow, that's looking great. That's something you don't really uh, envision when you design a game, you know, when you try to self-publish a game is you don't see how much help you probably need with a graphic design and everything and so yeah the few sketches from Mackie were a big like whoa that's gonna be awesome thanks oh wow that's awesome i'm also going to struggle with the uh, Shrink wrap. <laughs> That's amazing. Everything looks so great. All right, so my name is Thomas. I'm the creator of Shut Up and Take My Money. It's a uh, party game for uh, three to six people. In this game, uh, we're all uh, game designers who are trying to pitch their ideas to Kickstarter. To start Shut Up and Take My Money, each player drafts five project cards. Each project card represents a specific type of game, such as collectible card game. Players look at the project cards they have, select the one they like best, place it face down on the table in front of them, and then pass the remaining cards to their left. This process is called drafting, and the players continue to draft the project cards until they have chosen four of them. Players can now begin creating their games. At the start of each round, players are dealt seven idea cards. Every idea card has two words on it that describe a game. For example, exciting and dinosaurs. Players choose one word from at least three of their idea cards and create a game based on those words. Starting with the player who completed their game idea first, each player has 30 seconds to describe their game and convince the other players to vote for it. After a pitch is over, other players may ask one question about the game. After all the questions are answered, Play moves clockwise until all the games have been pitched. The best and worst games are chosen by vote. Players hand the Take My Money card to the designer they thought made the best game, and the Shut Up card to the designer of the worst game. After everyone is voted, the cards are revealed. Players receive one fame token for every Take My Money card, and the player with the most votes, positive or negative, also gets a fame token. The game ends after four rounds, and the player who has amassed the most fame tokens wins. I have here a gorgeous, light-hearted, undead dating simulation. Okay, so it's after the zombie apocalypse, and now the zombies rule the earth, but they actually are bored and from eating human brains. Now they need to start dating and procreating again. This game really hit a sweet spot for me. I love improv. Uh, it's what I do uh, for a living, and so that element of it really appealed to me. And it was fun to see uh, everyone really just kind of come off the top of their head uh, with these with these pitches and really take it very seriously. What is your one million dollar stretch goal? One million dollar stretch goal is an actual zombie apocalypse, <laughs> and you play this in real life. Yeah. All right. You LARP it. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you're next. I'm next. <laughs> That's this is not good. <laughs> I'm very underprepared. All right, so I have a, a multiplayer renaissance dog simulation game. <laughs> you uh, simulate the life of a dog of a famous artist in the renaissance. Wander around, it's more or less just, you just chill, but in the 1500s, inspire some paintings, bark, play around with the other renaissance dogs. You have a great time. <laughs> I liked how creative people got. I loved seeing the combinations that people put together and, and seeing their, uh, their different takes on stuff. I just laughed really hard. Am I going to be able to build my own dog character out of a selection of breeds? Like 85% of the game is just you customizing your dog. <laughs> the rest is more or less rough. <laughs> yeah. 
I love the, the making fun of the crowdfunding. We have one backer level uh, where you actually get a, uh, a kitten in the box with you. <laughs> Sold. Um, yeah. As a card game, Shut Up and Take My Money very clearly makes fun of that concept. Ultra-violent Japanese MMORPG involving science. <laughs> so, uh, it is in the style of certain other Japanese MMO games that you may have heard of but it's much more violent. You know, you actually get up and punch people and you use science to invent different weapons with which to hurt the other people. What kind of experts have you partnered with to make sure that this is as accurate as possible as far as the gore goes and the Japanese and the science? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. So um, we, we've, read a, we've read a lot of anatomy textbooks, you know. <laughs> it's, um, one, one of our goals is to you know, ask actual trauma surgeons, people in the ER, you know, to get the, the wounds correct. Uh, for Japan, well, we have w Wikipedia, you know. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll go to Japan at some point and see what it looks like. I, I, think, I think that will help. I thought that Shut Up and Take My Money was a very fun party game. It was lighthearted and creative. I really like games in that vein for party games, things that have a balderdashy type nature where you have to be very inventive and I thought that it really fit that category well. Um, we have a role-playing game about um, high school monk mutant snakes, which is, you know, vastly thematically similar to something we may all know and love from our childhood, but then very far away from any trademarks or copyrights. Um, in this role-playing game, you are learning how to fight ninja style, and um, you grow your love for pizza and uh, crime fighting through the streets of New York. There are a lot of comparison type games out there and with that mechanic, but this one made it, uh, because you had to use multiple cards, it really made it so that you had to uh, do something on your own instead of just putting two cards together. What is the educational value of this game? Teamwork, um, crime fighting. <laughs> how to make pizza, and um, basic problem solving. Love it. I think my concern uh, is going to be for the target audience. Uh, it is central, uh, the central idea is game design, and for game designers playing the game, it's, it's great, it's funny, but I think that's a very small part of the market. Ah, the nostalgia of watching cooking shows with your grandmother. Maybe there's a Martha Stewart on the television, or or Rachel Ray, but really you hate her stupid face. And so this first person shooter game is where you get to use ray guns to shoot the stupid people up in the face that are on their cooking shows. It's like you'd walk through various cooking shows and as you're watching from your couch, watching into the television, you have a special ray gun that you get to point at anybody on the TV cooking show and just shoot them in the stupid face. And that's time. Will there be a stretch goal level or a buy-in level for this uh, campaign where I can actually meet one of these chefs yes. and actually shoot them in the face? Yes. Yes. I thought the Shut Up and Take My Money was a totally charming game. Uh, normally I don't really enjoy improv games because I feel put on the spot, but I think uh, this game did a great job of giving you enough choices that you had the freedom to say what you wanted to say, but not, not so many that it was overwhelming. You're going to decide which one you, were, you like the least, which one you like the most, and we're going to vote simultaneously. So you're going to hand the card face down. This Ooh. is hard to decide. Ironically, I would pay my own money to have a game called Shut Up and Take My Money, and the fact that it's about uh, the process of crowdfunding and creating games, I, I love it. I would definitely buy that game. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so you have one take my money, you have two shut up. I would buy shut up and take my money if it was the right price. Maybe I'd buy it on Kickstarter. To be honest, you know, there's the risk of being mauled by the grizzly bear that's on staff. Unfortunately, I think the solution he came to was one that was not very elegant. I laughed so hard, I thought it was terrific.